लास्ट टॉपिक इन बायोलॉजिकल प्रोडक्ट इज सर्जिकल सूचर्स एंड लिगेचर्स सो द पॉइंट इंक्लूडेड इन यूर सिलेबस इज डेफिनेशन क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ सूचर्स एंड लिगेचर्स देन कैडगेट मैन्युफैक्चरिंग एंड प्रोसेसिंग एब्जॉर्बेबल सूचर्स विच इंक्लूड्स बोथ नेचुरल एंड सिंथेटिक सूचर्स नॉन एब्जॉर्बेबल सूचर्स विद सम एग्जाम्पल्स लाइक सिल्क पॉलियामाइड्स पॉलिस्टर्स मेटालिक वायर्स लिनन पॉलिओलिफेंस एंड Uh, finally the qc test for the sutures now surgical ligatures and sutures are nothing but threads or strings which are used uh, in in surgery and they are specially prepared and sterilized so if i want to define uh, separately a ligature is a thread which is used to constrict or seal off a blood vessel a vein or a artery hence to tie it up uh, the suture whereas the suture is defined as a thread which is used to stitch together the edges of the tissues the tissues can be a uh, skin muscle tendon peritoneum etc now the material uh, which can be used for this purpose uh, can be from the intestinal tissues and tendons of the animals the birds various types of uh, threads spun from the vegetable fibers some hairs like human hair or animal hairs or synthetic threads and metallic wires now they are used to tie up the blood vessels or the tissues so there are some essential properties which the ligature for the sutures must possess so the first important property is that they must be sterile now they must have second property is that they should have that much strength uh, so that it will serve the purpose of uh, holding up the tissue or a uh, blood vessel it should be less irritating Uh, the gauge or the thickness of the diameter of the uh, which is uh, or the thread which is used should be as fine as possible or as thin as possible and it should be absorbable uh, after after the purpose is solved that is it should degrade in the body on its own these are the general points about the sutures they are the medical device which are used to hold body tissues uh, together after an injury or an surgery so they uh, they are used with a needle so that needle will uh, allow easy uh, tying up of the uh, tissue or the vessel then they are available in various shapes and sizes uh, then they should be used by a medical practitioner so medical practitioners would include the surgeons physician the dentist uh, even the nursing uh, personnel uh, then the surgical knots after the sorry stretching or the tying of the blood vessel or the tissue is done you need to tie the knots so there are some spe uh, specific surgical knots which are used to secure the uh, sutures and the process is called as suturing next we come to the characteristic of sutures so uh, the first characteristic is it should not delay in healing process of uh, the tissue or the blood vessel then it should uh, retain its tensile strength unimpaired or unchanged for that period of time it should be inert uh, it should have uh, it should cause minimal tissue injury or tissue reaction then uh, it should have favorable absorption profile that is related with the self degradation of that uh, suture inside the body uh, then it is composed it should be composed of a material that is used in the any surgical procedures next we come to the classification of sutures so they are classified as absorbable or non absorbable basically as absorbable or not absorbable further will be again dealing with uh, various uh, ways in which they can be classified so as the name suggest first is the absorbable suture so they are absorbed or digested by the tissue uh, in the body after their suturing or the ligaturing function has been done Uh, then the material which is used in this uh, in uh, material which comes under this category should be non irritant and it should be sterile the examples are catgut then uh, collagen poly, uh, synthetic absorbable polymers kangaroo tendon tendon uh, ribbon uh, gut etc next type is non absorbable sutures as the name suggests it will not be absorbed or digested in the body so you have to remove it 
the sutures can also be classified uh, according to the uh, source that is uh, they can be a natural suture synthetic or metallic then according to the structure of the uh, thread which is uh, used so it can be monofilament or multifilament then uh, this we have already discussed that is according to the fate absorbable and non absorbable next we come to uh, classification of natural uh, sutures so they are further classified into absorbable natural and non absorbable natural so the examples are given for absorbable we have catgut kangaroo tendon uh, fascia lata and broca fill in non absorbable we have silk linen cotton and horsehair next we come to uh, synthetic uh, sutures so they are again classified into absorbable and non absorbable so absorbable in include poly uh, polyglycolic acid uh, then we have polyglactic acid and polyglactic uh, 910 which is also called as vicryl and polydioxazonol uh, non absorbable will include nylon which is also called as polyamide polypropylene or polyester and polyethylene so polypropylene and polyethylene are called as polyolefins next category is metallic sutures uh, the examples are stainless steel tantalum gold silver and aluminum uh, next uh, we can classify a uh, sutures depending upon the nature of the filament or the structure of the filament involved so it is monofilament examples include polypropylene polydioxazonol uh, and nylon and multi uh, multifilament uh, which includes silk and vicryl uh, silk uh, uh, will always have a braided uh, structure braided is uh, nothing but what we call in marathi a uh, veini or in hindi choti uh, usp classifies non absorbable sutures into three classes so class 1 includes uh, silk or synthetic fibers class 2 is uh, cotton or linen and class 3 is metal wires uh, the first uh, suture which is mentioned in your syllabus is catgut. It, uh, this includes the manufacturing and processing of catgut also. So uh, it is the most widely used suture or ligature material. Uh, catgut uh, also called as violin gut is prepared from the intestine of sheep and uh, it has been used over hundreds of years. Now earlier little was known about the sturdity of the catgut material. Uh, we all know that whenever it is obtained from a natural source, so it is always uh, infected with uh, bacteria. So it was earlier it was not known that uh, the gut may be infected with the uh, with the pathogenic bacteria. After the discovery of pastures, that is, Pasteur has discovered the methods of sterilization. Uh, so after that only uh, the surgeons they used uh, sterilized catgut, and the sterilization was done by using phenol. And nowadays, it has uh, catgut is included as a monograph in the pharmacopoeia. Next part is about the manufacturing of catgut. Uh, now, there are 10 steps involved in the manufacturing. You can make a short form of uh, it to memorize it or to remember it. So, the and it is a very important topic. So, the first step is raw material. So, as I said in the earlier uh, slide, that uh, the catgut is obtained from sheep's intestine. So the sheep are slaughtered and their intestine is removed and in the transit period it is placed in the cold storage or it is packed in the brine for transport. Now out of 25 meters of the intestine only the first 7.5 meters is selected for the catgut preparation. Next step involves the selection and washing of the intestine. So uh, cleaning of the intestine or casing, this intestine is also called as casing. Uh, so it is done by alternately uh, drawing them through hands and soaking them in water. So with the help of hands they are like uh, uh, cleaned and then soaked in water just like we wash the clothes. Uh, this is done repeatedly until the casing is as clean as possible. And after that uh, they are inspected and if at all uh, the quality is poor then the, it is rejected. Uh, next step is splitting the casings or the intestine. Uh, before this, I'll explain this in uh, easy language. So what happens is uh, in the intestine, which is tubular in shape, uh, there are uh, 
there are layers number of layers so we are interested in only one layer for the preparation of cat gut that is the mucosal layer so what is done is uh, the tube the intestine is stretched uh, and they are cut longitudinally with the help of knife and this splits the intestine into the rough part of the intestine and the smooth part of the intestine so a uh, rough part is called as a mesenteric part and the smooth part is called as the anti mesenteric part and the uh, one which is required for the surgical uh, gut preparation is the smooth part now as explained in the earlier uh, slide uh, there are four layers okay so uh, we are interested only in the one layer so the next step is the removal of unwanted layers so gut consists of four layers one is the outer mesenteric the muscular layer uh, submucosal layer and the mucosal layer except mucosa that is the mucosal layer all others layer that is the outer mesenteric muscular and the submucosal layer uh, they are scraped off these three are scraped off with the help of knife and uh, what we need or what we require is the mucosal layer so that is a process and being uh, this process is being uh, aided by soaking the intestine in the alkaline solution so in the diagram you can see the first part that on the left hand side you can see the layers the intestinal layers and the one which we are interested in the preparation of a cat gut is the grey one that is a mucosal layer so next step is the orientation of fibers now during the scraping process uh, that is the removal of unwanted layers the constituent fibers are arranged in a parallel way so they are uh, literally they are uh, placed uh, in between two holders uh, in such a way that uh, it is held properly so they are arranged in more parallel way which greatly increases the tensile strength after this there is hardening of the intestinal uh, layer that is uh, the ribbons are tanned or they are hardened by soaking into a solution of chromic acid so what happens is this uh, a treatment with chromic acid it causes a delay in the absorption of the cat gut in the body so that will the cat gut when they are used as suture so they will uh, be absorbed or disintegrate or degrade uh, after a, a long period of time so this delaying is done by treating it with chromic acid now earlier uh, the cat gut was labeled as 10 20 or 40 days that is the uh, the suture will be remain uh, will remain unabsorbed for 10 days or 20 days or 40 days but uh, like uh, the body also uh, will have some effect on the absorption process and uh, that uh, and also the area where this uh, suture is used so now this terminology that is instead of using uh, the days wala terminology the uh, cat goods are labeled or termed as plain chromic and extra chromic now this uh, corresponds to the same thing that is plain will uh, be degraded in 10, 10 days chromic in 20s and extra chromic in 40 days now next step is uh, the spinning of the uh, ribbons which are formed so ribbons uh, they are tied at one end in either a group of two three or more depending upon the gauge or the diameter of the thread which is to be prepared uh, and the pulling is uh, done at even tension and then they are finally spun so number of twist uh, which is used in the spinning of the thread it must be carefully control so that a uniform product is obtained which has good tensile strength tensile strength uh, is nothing but the strength which is required by a thread uh, to resist breaking so whenever it is stretched uh, then the thread should not break so that is called as tensile strength now even uh, the hardening which is described in the earlier slide that is uh, treating it with chromic acid so this uh, treatment with chromic acid can be done in the spinning stage also 
but the problem is uh, the center of the string will be unaffected by the chromic solution so there will be no uniform exposure uh, of the uh, ribbons with the chromic acid after this uh, drying of the uh, ribbons are done so then it is drying is done in the atmo atmospheric conditioned uh, that is the temperature and the humidity is properly maintained so that uh, proper and uniform drying is uh, achieved and the strings uh, are being kept under suitable tension during the drying process also after this uh, we have finishing uh, step that is the dried strings which are polished by mechanical means this uh, finishing process is also called as the smoothening process wherein the strings they are rubbed against an abrasive surface to produce a smooth uh, a uniform string of circular section now this is a very important part of the manufacturing with, which ensures good quality surgical catgut step is the gauging that is uh, determining the dimensions of the uh, thread or the catgut uh, so gauging of the string is carefully checked and it should be uniform in a batch and also throughout the length of the string next part is about the sterilization of catgut as i said the catgut is obtained from uh, sheep intestine which is infected with the pathogenic bacteria so the pathogenic bacteria may be uh, tetanus causing bacteria or gas gangrene causing bacteria so in this case uh, sterility is a very important uh, thing which has to be checked so this sterility is checked by uh, the sterility test which are mentioned in the pharmacopoeia now uh, catgut also consists of uh, collagen so this collagen it gets converted to gelatin if heated in presence of moisture so whatever is the sterilization process it uh, you have to take care that the sterilization is carried out in absence of moisture so that this collagen which is an important part of catgut will not get converted into gelatin sterilization can be done by heat by chemical methods or by exposing it to ionizing radiations so chemical will include the use of iodine uh, but the disadvantage of using iodine is it requires long period of immersion so and there is variable increase in the absorption time in the body if it is treated with iodine so next uh, method is the heat process now in spite of the problem which is mentioned in the earlier slide that is uh, during sterilization in presence of uh, moisture it may get converted into gelatin uh, but if we have a controlled uh, uh, sterilization process then we can have a more satisfactory product next best method is by using radiations uh, particularly gamma radiations which are of great advantage and we can uh, finally uh, like we can termine we can do the terminal sterilization that is uh, after it is uh, sealed in the container the containers are uh, subjected to sterilization the first method is the heat process under this uh, we have tubing wherein uh, the suitable lengths of the gut they are coiled on a heat resisting fiber card and these uh, coiled gut they are placed in a glass tube along with a label uh, and uh, whatever is whatever is the matter for printing uh, like the ink which is used for printing that should also be heat resistant so that it, it will not interfere with the uh, gut which is present in the uh, the tubes uh, second is the drying method wherein the tubes are placed in the basket and then they are dried in the drying oven uh, the temperature of which is raised slowly so that it will avoid the damage to the gut now once they are thoroughly dried the sterilization process can be done in two ways which is described in the next uh, slide the first method is the baskets of the tubes are they are they are placed in an autoclave uh, containing an anhydrous fluid such as toluene or xylol and then the temperature of this autoclave is maintained at 160 degree celsius for several hours uh, the second uh, step is by using a non pressure vessel 
because the uh, earlier one that is uh, the autoclave is a controlled temperature and under a pressure so the second method will be uh, a non pressure vessel uh, which uses anhydrous liquid of high boiling point so that the temperature of 160 degree celsius is maintained so these are the two methods for sterilization next is the tubes are then filled with sterile tubing fluid and sealed by fusion of glass which is done under stringent aseptic condition so after the sterilization is done there is one uh, tubing fluid which is filled inside the tubes and which are which are then sealed and the sealing is done in the aseptic conditions uh, next process is the irradiation process wherein the prepared gut they are packed in the aluminum foil envelopes containing 90% of ipa as preservative now these envelopes they are passed on a conveyor belt uh, and these are subjected to radiations uh, the advantage is that uh, the catgut which is present in the final container is sterilized so there is no uh, additional step required for packaging uh, so the process is rapid and there is no hold up of the material as in the other process of so sterilization next point is uh irradiation is done 40 percent excess than that required to destroy the resistant organism now to explain this i'll take an imaginary number uh say the organism present in the cat get it gets killed uh at one mega rats okay so uh 40 percent of one mega rats will be 1.4 so i'll expose my cat get uh final product uh to 1.4 mega rats of radiations so this will assure that the resistant organism that is uh, uh, what i assume is ki one mega rad is sufficient to kill the uh, resistant organism so i am exposing my packet to 1.4 so that will doubly assure me that uh, the resistant organism is also killed next point is the total dose received is 2.5 mega rads now depending upon the preservatives used the catgits are available in the form of either boilable or non boilable catgit uh, the boilable catgit is preserved in xylol toluene uh, etc uh, and the non boilable catgits are preserved in 90 to 95% alcohol so this uh, is in terms of the sterilization which is required just before opening the uh, catgut uh, packet so the tubing it contains any water the tubes of the catguts are labeled as non boilable so this non boilable will in will indicate a warning that you have to avoid use of heat prior to opening of the packet now these non boilable uh, catguts are more popular as they keep the suture flexible and immediately ready for use the outside as they are not boiled before or they are not sterilized by boiling before use they can be simply sterilized by using uh, wash by using uh, soapy solution or just steeping a germicidal solution before opening now this uh, boilable will have anhydrous tubes and they are soaked for few minutes in uh, sterile industrial methylated spirit or saline solution the official catguts which are there in the market are uh, the non boilable variety uh, this particular slide shows a few marketed sutures you can see here uh, that is catgut chromic that is it is treated with uh, chromic acid uh, suture Uh, this slide shows uh, how the label uh, how what the label indicates so uh, suture name here is chromic gut that is it is treated with uh, chromic acid then 54 inches or 135 centimeter is the uh, length of the suture then you have suture size that is in uh, zero and then you have the batch number and 
sometimes the suture also comes with the needle so or else uh, they mention what type of needle uh, shape and sizes to be used so this part is also included here that is the needle shape and the size Uh, this is just for your information. This is a marketed product called as Gut Pro, and the description of this uh, Gut Pro is uh, mentioned. So what we have is uh, the uh, the properties of this uh, cat gut that it is chromic suture. Next is uh, the special features which includes uh, uh, the advantages like uh, excellent tensile strength, and good uh, absorption not security etc and it is uh, packed in ipa the material is mentioned then we have the color uh, now there are uh, specific color codes which are used for sutures so this is just for your information so not to be uh, like rectified for your exam purpose but just remember that there are color codes for a particular sutures like catgut Chromic will have a different colored code, a plain catgut will have different colored color code. Metallic wires will have different color codes. Now these color codes are for identification purpose. Next part we have is the absorption profile that uh, it will get absorbed in so and so days. Then the packaging that it is packed in the uh, isopropyl alcohol, sterilization methods, the shelf life and the gauge size. Uh, next, we move to the advantages and disadvantages of uh, catgut. So, the first advantage is that if it is absorbed, it is less likely to form sinus tract if the stitching uh, causes sepsis. Uh, next is, it is uh, useful where the non-absorbable sutures may act as a, uh, you can say, uh, a site where the microorganism can grow like in case of joints uh, in the urinary tract etc so in suturing the mucosa of git uh, this where the non absorbable sutures may cause chronic ulceration or hemorrhage catgut can be used also in case of uh, skin suturing uh, where the non -re removable suture uh, re removal can be painful so in that case also catgut is useful next uh, is the disadvantage because the preparation is complex it is expensive also the sterilization is uh, problematic next is uh, it will lose the tensile strength quickly and uh, the healing is naturally slow then uh, it can lead to intense tissue reaction which is not desirable and the not holding that is once it's, it is stitched uh, we need to knot uh, the uh, suture so that not holding with the help of catgut is not proper next example of absorbable natural suture is kangaroo tendons so they are obtained from the tails of kangaroos and they are processed in the manner similar to that of catgut the strings are prepared in three gauge sizes, but uh, they are used, uh, their use is limited. Next is uh, they are absorbed slowly in the body and they are chiefly used in case of hernia or in case of bone repair. Uh, other example of uh, natural absorbable suture is brocafil. Now this is prepared from animal sinew. Sinew is nothing but a piece of uh, tough fibrous tissue uh, uniting a muscle to a bone. Uh, now this animal sinew is macerated uh, in a special acid solution to disintegrate the tissue present in the animal uh, sinew and then they are homogenized. Now this process of maceration and then homogenization does not damage the constituent fibrils of the tissue and the product is viscous fluid containing the fibrils in the suspension. This fluid is squittered continuously into a basic liquid 
where it solidifies as the ribbon and then these ribbons are polished and sterilized. The advantages of brocafil includes uh, little original contamination. Then we have an exact uniform gauging. The threads may be as long as uh, required. They have good tensile strength, uh, ease of sterilization and good absorption qualities. Next example is a fascia lata. So this is derived from ox fascia that is a, a muscle obtained from a muscle in the thigh. So it is used as heavy suture for hernia repair and urethral slings. Uh, next example is collagen which is excluded from a deep flexure tendons of cattle. Uh, they are smoother and somewhat more uniform in properties than, as compared to cat grit. Next classification includes uh, synthetic absorbable sutures. Uh, uh, these are the polymers. They are derived from condensing the cyclic derivatives of glycolic acid mixture of glycolide and lactide, dioxanone, glycolide with trimethyl carbonate, mixture of glycolide with dioxanone. So they are prepared by melt extrusion process into yarns. So melt extrusion is nothing but uh, preparing a polymer by uh, a reaction and then forcing out uh, this polymer uh, through a narrow nozzle so that will be in the form of string and then these are processed into yarns so these are then braided into various size of sutures they possess high tensile strength and they can be packed without fluid and finally sterilized by irradiation so they do not undergo absorption such as catgut but they are broken enzymatically into residues which can be degraded by body. Examples include Vicryl, Polysop, Monocryl and Dexon. An example under synthetic absorbable suture is polyglycolic acid or PGA marketed as Dexon. So it is composed of uh, polymerized hydroacetic acid uh, which is called as polyglycolic acid. They are non-toxic, they are non-collagen product, flexible and can be handled like silk which is very smooth. So they are available in all standard gauges that is dimension. So advantage is that it will retain high percentage of the tensile strength during the first two weeks of implantation which is the most critical period of wound repair. Then uh, PGA is very inert causing only mild tissue reaction as compared to cat guts both in clean and in infected wounds. So these are the examples of uh, marketed absorbable sutures. Next we come to non-absorbable sutures. As the name suggests these are made from the material which is neither digested nor absorbed during the process of wound healing. So they are buried sutures which becomes encapsulated with fibrous tissue and they can remain permanently in the tissue until they are surgically removed. So they are resistant to attack by the tissue fluids. You can say that they remain intact in the body and hence they have to be uh, removed. Example include silk, cotton, linen. Uh, they are the example of natural non-absorbable sutures. Then for uh, synthetic non-absorbable we have nylon, polyester, polyolefins which include polypropylene, uh, polyethylene and metallic sutures. The first uh, non-absorbable natural uh, suture is silk. So it is an important uh, suture. It consists of strands which are prepared from filaments of cocoon uh, which is spun by the silk worm. So there are three forms which are used. One is twisted, floss, pleated or braided. 
in natural form that is original form of silk it has 25 percent of natural gram and it is called as undischarged form now in the first form that is a twisted silk suture these are prepared from unbleached undischarged filament which are spun in multiple so you just have to uh, you can say spun the original silk suture into uh, multiple uh, units then you have floss silk where uh, which is prepared from a coarser filament on the outer surface of the silkworm cocoon then you have pleated or the braided silk which is generally used in uh, surgery it is prepared from discharged silk and the range of the size is dependent upon the number of strands which are braided together silk suture are very strong they have smooth surface uh, it imparts you uh, can say can assure not security ease of handling and it can be used in many uh, surgical sites uh, sometimes it is coated with oil wax or silicone the disadvantage is that it lacks uniformity in gauge of course that will be dependent upon the type which is used or the form which is used uh, brittleness and the limited length uh, it can be sterilized by autoclaving but again autoclaving can cause loss of the strength, tensile strength so it is uh, sterilized by using radiation or ethylene oxide sterilization method next is the linen uh, which is again an example of natural non absorbable suture so it consists of selected fibers made into twisted strand of from flax the name uh, the biological name of flax is given that is linum u c tarti simum so a uh, strand which is normally prepared by spinning three cords and the size of the cord is chosen to produce the ultimate desired dimension of the thread or the gauge of the thread now for surgical use it must be firm and even the sperm spun then uh, and it should be free from fuzziness uh, used in many surgical techniques and they frequently need to be rendered non capillary and serum proof by treatment with suitable proofing agent so when they are used for surgical techniques they are treated first with a suitable proofing agents so that will not not allow uh, fuzziness for the linen fiber to occur next is uh, they are sterilized by autoclaving or by ethylene oxide or by uh, radiation sterilization but a uh, radiation sterilization causes loss of strength linen suture is not absorbed and hence it will not lose the tensile strength it is also available in treated form the one which is uh, treated with silicone or polyvinyl solution next example of synthetic non absorbable suture is polyamide commonly called as nylon so they are formed from polymerization uh, reaction product of an acid and an amine so nylon and polymerized caprolactam are examples of readily available polyamide sutures they are available in both forms that is monofilament and multifilament now after implantation the monofilament uh, loses about 30% of its original tensile strength by 2 years because of the chemical degradation whereas multi uh, filament it loses 100% of the tensile strength after 6 months in the tissue the main drawback of this uh, type of polyamide suture is uh, the poor handling characteristic and the not security so this a uh, type of uh, suture as prepared by extrusion process wherein uh, whatever is the chemical uh, 
formed after the polymerization reaction uh, it is subjected to extrusion that is passing through uh, the orifice so that will uh, form a thread like uh, material so the size will depend upon the orifice through which it is allowed to move uh, then it is sterilized by autoclaving ethylene oxide treatment or by radiation and this requires a special knot procedure now next uh, these are the few marketed uh, polyamide sutures polyester is the next uh, synthetic non absorbable suture which is uh, prepared in the plated or braided form and it consists of filaments which are prepared by polymerizing esters which are formed by combination of ethylene glycol and terephthalic acid and the marketed name of this product is a terylene or dacron now as uh, described earlier it is available in both forms that is plain that is original form or a coated form coating can be done uh, by using uh, polybutylate teflon and silicon which decreases the drag when the suture is drawn through the tissue so this suture is one of the strongest non metallic sutures available but undergoes little or no loss in the tensile strength so it will remain intact throughout the implantation period and then uh, once it is properly placed it will support the uh, wound or where it is uh, tied and slowly heal the tissue the main disadvantage is that it has poor knot security and high coefficient of friction and slight tissue reactivity particularly in the contaminated environments so environment here will include the wound wherein it is placed next example is polyolefins which generally includes polypropylene or polymeric combination of ethylene or propylene so polypropylene is available in monofilament form it retains uh, tensile strength without reduction uh, after implantation it has high uh, knot security and it is a best suture for skin closure now however the tensile strength of uh, polypropylene is less as compared to all monofilament non metallic suture next category of uh, suture is metallic sutures till date it is the toughest material used in for suturing so the first metal is silver it is one of the oldest material which is used uh, as a suture uh, silver also possesses uh, antiseptic properties but this uh, silver is irritating in some tissues so it is not much used nowadays next metal is a stainless steel so it is a ferrous alloy which is widely used in the form of wire sutures or fixation plates screws for the surgical use now it is an alloy so it is a mixture of uh, metals so it make uh, it has uh, many uh, it is a composition uh, and the property of an alloy will be dependent upon the individual uh, component which is present in the mixture so not all alloys are or not all the components of alloys are resistant to chemical attack so whenever we are forming an alloy or uh, preparing it uh, for the surgical use proper selection of the material is important now stainless steel alloy is available in the form of twisted braided or monofilament strand it has a good strength but it is difficult to use and is employed in the area where great strength is required like in case uh, after angio uh, angiography wherein the sternum is cut or uh, chest surgery uh, so in that case we can use steel uh, stainless steel sutures this is about the tantalum suture so it is uh, the strongest and it produces most most secure knot for uh, suturing 
tissue tolerance is good but it is less than uh, that found within nylon it is a it is a metallic uh, material so it will undergo degradation through corrosion uh, and results in transfer of ions from suture to the tissue so few reaction to these ion can occur that is because of the formation of ions uh, there will be a reaction then the sutures are very stiff so that uh, inhibits the host movement the resultant irritation may produce tissue damage and increase susceptibility to infection now coming to the packaging and labeling uh, part of uh, sutures uh, these sutures are preserved either dry or in fluid in containers or packets so that sterility is maintained now a number of such containers may be placed in a single box next is about the labeling the label of each individual container should mention the size the length the type of the suture the kind of the needle uh, which is used or if uh, sometimes needle is also included in the pack number of sutures lot number name of the manufacturer this is uh, the general uh, requirement if a removable needles are used the labeling should indicate that the suture size is designated by the metric size or the gauge number which is in accordance to usp size and then uh, the label should uh, should also mention the address of the manufacturer packer distributor and the composition of the packing fluid this we have also seen in one of the marketed uh, description so you can just go through it the first qc test required according to uh, the pharmacopeia is the sterility test so as uh, they are implanted or they are used inside our body so they need to be sterile so the sterility test uh, theory you must have gone in your microbiology so there are three mediums which are used one is fluid thioglycolate medium soybean casein and alternate thioglycolate medium uh, these three mediums are used uh, so that we can get a idea about the type of bacteria like uh, fluid thioglycolate will uh, be allowing only the growth of anaerobic bacteria so i have been casein for aerobic bacteria and fungi so these are the mediums then we have to conduct two test one is the media sterility test and second is a growth promotion test now in this uh, the media sterility test will be uh, giving an idea about whether the medium prepared is sterile or not there are whereas in case of uh, growth promotion test we purposely inoculate a microorganism in the media so that we can check whether the medium is helping the microorganism to grow or not so we have the media and we have two test after that we will come to the uh, size of the uh, suture which is used so according to usp if you see Three section of the strand, which is uh, each thirty centimeter long, is used as a sample for sterility testing. Now this is to be cut from various regions in a particular length, like the initial, the middle, and the last part of the suture can be used. Then next is uh, after this uh, sample or the strand is inoculated in this three media, we have to incubate. the media for 14 days at a particular temperature which is in accordance to the pharmacopeia again and we have to check for the growth of microorganism now after this we can conclude whether the uh, suture is sterile or not now in some cases the bactericidal or bacteriostatic agent is added in the suture so this may interfere with the sterility test so 
if that is the case we need to neutralize the effect of bactericidal and bacteriostatic agent which is added in the suture so that we will get an appropriate result of the sterility test next parameter we need to determine is the length so the length is determined without stretching the suture and whatever is the length which is stated in the label the length of the suture should not be less than 90% of the length which is mentioned in the label second is the gauge which is uh, similar to the micrometer which you must have used in your 12th to determine the thickness of the pin so it is measured by the dial reading micrometer at several points of the suture next we come to uh, the tensile strength so we have a apparatus which is uh, used in the determination of tensile strength now in this case uh, the load necessary to rupture the gut is measured now both the straight uh, suture and the knotted sample of the suture is tested for the tensile strength for the tensile strength measurement a machine is used which is called as inclined plane tester now in this case uh, whether the suture is in a dry form in a fluid form uh, the tensile strength is determined after removal of the suture from the container without drying or conditioning so it, if it is removed from the container it is immediately tested for the tensile strength next is the tensile strength of the suture now tensile strength is nothing but uh, the strength which is required uh, for a suture to remain intact and that is without breaking so even if we stretch uh, or we elongate it it should not break so this tensile strength is measured by using a motor driven tensile strength uh, testing machine uh, it works on two principle one is uh, the constant rate of load on the specimen and second principle is constant rate of elongation of the specimen now in both the cases it has uh, the apparatus is like it has two clamps holding the strand out of these two clamps one is mobile now the clamp is designed such that there is a, uh, the st strand remains intact on the clamp without slipping the second term we uh, used in this uh, test is the gauge length that is the length or the interior distance between the two clamps now if the gauge length or the length of the strand is 125 to 200 mm then the mobile clamp that is the clamp which is moving is to be moved in such a way that the elongation of the strand is 30 plus minus 5 centimeter per minute okay so you have to move the mobile clamp in such a way that the elongation occurs by 30 plus minus 5 centimeter per minute this is the first phase when you have the gauge length of 125 to 200 mm now in the second case if the gauge length is less than 125 mm the rate of elongation should be double that is if you have a 5 centimeter ka gauge length then the rate of elongation should be 10 centimeter per minute now this was the first principle that is based on the constant rate of elongation of the specimen now in the second case uh, that is based on the uh, principle of constant uh, load of specimen this is based on uh, addition of weight wherein uh, the on the mobile strand we apply weight so the weight which uh, which tends to break the cord or the strand is noted now the next uh, parameter which is to be determined uh, for suture is the diameter so the instrument used is the dead weight type which is run on mechanical or electrical means and which is equipped uh, 
with a direct reading dial or digital readout or printed readout to know the value of the diameter uh, the gauge or the you can say the scale of the readout is graduated in terms of uh, in uh, 2 0.002 mm or smaller now it has two parts the anvil and the presser foot so anvil ga anvil of the gauge is about 50 mm in diameter and the presser foot is about 12.7 plus minus 0.02 in diameter now if you go through the uh, video you will see that first the weight is added uh, to the presser foot and then it is like teared and after that the sample to be analyzed is kept so that will get a direct reading of uh, the diameter so same concept is used here now in the presser foot uh, and the moving parts a uh, weighed load or a total load of about 210 plus minus 3 grams of uh, load is added and the reading is taken now the presser foot and the anvil uh, surface are plane to within 0.005 mm and they are parallel to each other to within 005 or uh, 005 mm so this is the first case uh, the second case is if the metric uh, size of the suture is 0.4 or smaller then we have to remove the additional weight from the presser foot so that the total load on the suture does not exceed 0, uh, 60 grams so this is a method which is used for determination of uh, diameter the diameter is to be taken at three different points uh, that roughly uh, the places where it is to be taken is one fourth one half and three fourth of the length of the sutures now if in case you have a braided suture two measurements are taken at each point at right angles to each other and then the average reading is taken 